So today, we will be looking at the temptation of Jesus Christ. We're going to be reading out of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. But first, I'd like to set this up properly, if, if you will. You know, after Jesus' baptism, he was immediately led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The test, temptations from God, and from God's point of view, I should say, excuse me, from God's point of view, were very, very necessary. Very necessary for Jesus' ministry. Necessary because it demonstrated the quality of our Lord God. It would be impossible for God's Son to sin and save the world. And Jesus could not give in to sin. That is going against his Father's word. Because that is, after all, what is at the heart of sin, right? It's at the heart of going against God's will. Being selfish, doing our own things that we want to do, whims, wills, desires. As is often the case with Jesus Christ, he suffers the tenth degree. He suffers the tenth degree that is humanly possible. He died on the cross. One of the worst deaths that a person could ever experience. Just ima imaginable. And what we'll see here as we read the scripture, he suffers a self-imposed hunger, starvation, fasting to the point of near death. Jesus does this so there's no excuse. No excuse or no weakness in his ministry that his critics can point to. If you took the easy way out, the critics would be, see, Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Savior. Take an easy way out. He's really not the Son of God, nor is he all that great, they would say. That's one of the reasons that he goes to the nth degree in human suffering. What we know now, scientifically, is that starving past 40 days hunger means that there will be permanent body damage she went to the last last day 40 days you know I, I as I studied this this week meditated on it I think the heavenly host must have must have held their collective breath during this time this was a monumental battle in the spirit world the sonship and future of the world was in balance. It was in the balance. If you will, this is the D-Day. Okay? That changes the tide in the spirit world. Not since Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden has there been such a critical event in the history of the world and kingdom. Now what I'd like to do is spell out the connection to us now as it happened in the Garden of Eden and as we're going to read about as it happened to Jesus Christ in the wilderness. So if you join me now, chapter 4, verse 1. The caption here is Temptation of Jesus Christ. Hear now the word of the Lord. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, 
It is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down now and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. So saith the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So in the Greek word, parazo means for tempted or a test put to the test. And we see here in verse 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Comes up out of the water, baptized. Off the wilderness he goes. God knows the temptations that we face. Right out of the box, Jesus is going to face temptation. Let's get it done and over with. And as usual, and even today, the devil, or diablos, as it said, is, is in the Greek words, which means slanderer, accuser, tries to sort God's plan, purpose, or will, as usual. And, and there's something here very, very important, very important, very important to point out, because it affects you. It affects you and it affects me. God never tempts anyone to do evil. God never tempts anyone to do evil. He does use circumstances to test a person's character. He does use circumstances to test your character. In this case, that we see here in Scripture, the Father uses the devil's own intention for the good purpose of strengthening Jesus' own ministry and messianic role in the world. Flips it around on the devil, as God often does. Was it difficult for Jesus? Absolutely. He was human, very much human, very much human as we are. Yes. And how many times have you been in your own wilderness? Your own wilderness, tired, worn out, fed up with a situation. And it's difficult to withstand the temptations that come your way. The devil knows this. He prays on our weaknesses. He goes after us when we're at our weakest, too. But when we withstand the devil's temptations, we come out on the other side. Better off, stronger, more knowledgeable. Verse 2, 40. You see 40 days, right? 40 days, 40 nights, 40. It's a number that often appears in the Bible, throughout the Bible. Moses and the children of Israel experienced 40 years of testing in the wilderness. Noah on the ark, 40 days, 40 nights. In verse 3, What's the first thing the devil tempts Jesus with? The first thing. Food. The first thing. Have y'all ever been so hungry that you feel like your ribs are going to touch? You know? Just starving? You see, whether we realize it or not, that's the devil's, one of the devil's favorite temptations is food. I uh, had some wonderful men, my father, my uncles, on the Van Kieran side, my father's side, when I was growing up. Great examples of godly men. Didn't smoke, 
would drink. But the family was susceptible to sugar, to diabetes. Put a chocolate cake out in front of them, look out. The brothers would fight over it. Now I say this not to, to, to you know, down them or criticize them. I say this because each and every one of us has that something. That something. They couldn't care less if they smoked or drank or whatever, gambled. But boy, it was hard. It was hard for them to walk away from sugar. And when we do succumb to the devil's temptation, he's there to slander us, just like Diablo means slanderer, accuser. Remind us of how bad we really are. And he tries to tell us that. Why even resist? It's useless. And this is where the grace, this is where the grace of our Father, this is where the saving waters of Jesus Christ comes into our lives. In verse 4, Jesus answered, It is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. I want you to notice something here in this, in, in this section. And that is that for every response Jesus has for the devil, it's not Christ's words. It's not Christ's words. Now you're saying, well, wait a minute, Pastor. It's highlighted red in my Bible, okay? That's Jesus talking. It's Scripture. It's Scripture. He's quoting his Father's words from Scripture. As we know it now, it's Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 8.3. This is why your pastors you know, encourage you to read the Bible. Memorize those verses. So when the temptation arises, and it will, temptation will come, we'll have the weapons available right up here. In verse 5, we see the devil took him to the holy city. Now, what's the holy city? The holy city is Jerusalem, right? Now, scholars believe the highest point was the southeast corner of the temple. It's overlooking the Kidron Valley. Now, why do I point this out? Because it is believed that that's 300 feet high at that day. 300 feet. Certainly enough to kill a man if he jumped off that the peak. In verse 6, you know the devil misquoted scripture here. Big surprise there, right? The devil actually misquoting scripture. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. He misquotes scripture on purpose, obviously. Trying to pull Jesus in. And when the psalmist wrote this, this is actually from Psalm 91, excuse me. When the psalmist wrote this, he implies a person is only protected when they are doing the will of God. A person is only protected when they are doing the will of God. That's the implication here. And in verse 7, Jesus is also saying it is not proper to expect God to do something when it is out of his will. If you're praying for something that is out of God's will, it's not going to happen. You have to walk with the Spirit. Be in. Be in the Spirit with God. In verse 8, 8 and 9. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. All this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. 
Now, some people read this and they take it for the face value. You know, worship the devil, right? Really, what the, what the devil is trying to do here is he's, he's offering a shortcut. He's offering a shortcut to Jesus. Satan had the power to give all the kingdoms to Jesus. And Satan is saying, I can accomplish the will of God for you right now. Let's just get it done with. You don't have to go through all this suffering and everything you're doing and serving and healing. We'll just get it done now. We're told in Corinthians 4, 4 that Satan is the God of this age. In John 12, 31, he is the prince of the world. You know, if Jesus did this, he would have sidestepped the redemptive work on the cross. He would have negated love that God the Father has for each and every one of us. No salvation. No hope. In verse 10, Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Very important word at the end of that. Only. And there's, there's a lot we can learn just from this short verse. Just as we are tempted, just as Eve was tempted in the Garden of Eden, and just as Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, there's three things, three things that the devil goes to. It's in his playbook. You can count on these. It's nothing new. It started from the beginning, right from the beginning. Physical appetite, number one. Consumption, food, drink, gluttony, right? Comes after us with our appetite. Whatever physical appetite that may be, that's number one. Number two, desire for personal gain. Desire for personal gain. Likes to come at you with a desire for personal gain. Your agenda, your wants, your selfishness. Desires over God's will. Number two. Number three. An easy path to power or glory. An easy path to power or glory. That shortcut I was talking about. You know, right now in our culture, fame is the hot button. You can be famous, not rich. You can be famous and be broke. You can be famous and be the butt end of a lot of jokes. An easy path to power or glory. So physical appetite, desire for personal gain, easy path to power or glory. There it is, your top three. In verse 11, then the devil left him, and angels came and attended to him. And here's the good news. Here's the good news for each and every one of you. Each and every one of you. The Holy Spirit will come and attend to you when you call upon the Holy Spirit. The Helper is here for you now. It's what God the Father sent to us. And when you call upon the name of Jesus Christ, the devil will flee. Christ will split the night, his light. His light will split the night, the darkness of darkness. Jesus Christ is our rock, our foundation in times of trouble and of temptation. Lean on him. Call for the Holy Spirit. We're in the Lenten season. Some Christians give up something for Lent. You can be sure that the devil will be coming by to tempt you to give up on that Lenten promise. Lean on the Lord and call for the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I pray that all the as he did with Eve in the garden, as he did with Jesus Christ, appetite is the first thing on the list. Desire for personal gain, how we can get ahead the easy way stand and fight off the temptations of the evil one and that we look to you Lord in this holy season as our redeemer and our savior
Amen.